Hey guys, James Sane here. So today's video is gonna be on thick cardiac output. So a little bit about me. I'm a nurse for 30 plus years, mainly worked ICU, but a whole lot of cardiac cath lab. I'm an adjunct professor. I teach at Polk State College here in Central Florida. Um, and I teach uh, pharmacology and I teach hemodynamics. So you need to know FIC for whatever reason, either you're a CVT student or you're gonna take your RCIS exam and it, and it will be on there. So let's get to that. So here, if you just need the formula, here it is, FIC cardiac output is your O2 consumption. And the, the O usually has a dot above it. And O2 consumption divided by the oxygen saturation of your AO minus your PA times 1.36 times hemoglobin times 10. And that will give you your fit cardiac output in milliliters per minute. All right, so if you have some more time, let's break down into the formula. So for O2 consumption, um, all right, so the thick cardiac output, it says it's the gold standard, and it is the most accurate in low cardiac output situations. One of the drawbacks of the thick cardiac output is that it uses, oftentimes it's used an assumed O2 consumption. Now, you may work in a lab where you use a Douglas bag and you may actually measure the O2 consumption, which make your thick cardiac output very accurate. I just never have happened to work, and I've worked in three different cath labs, where we actually measure fit cardiac output, I mean, where we actually measure O2 consumption. Now, you may work in a lab and majority of people do thermodilutional, and that's fine. Uh, some labs do that. You may work in a lab, some doctors do TD, some doctors do FIC. I happen to work in a lab now where everybody does FIC. So, components of the FIC cardiac output is that the O2 consumption there's a number of different formulas. So a common formula is 125 times BSA. Another potential formula you may run into is 110 times BSA for elderly. And then that begs the question, who's elderly? Or you can have a three milliliters per kilogram of body weight. Uh, if you have to figure out BSA, it's often given to you, but you may have to figure it out for your registry exam. Uh, the BSA is the patient's height in centimeters times their weight in kilograms divided by 3,600, you take that number, the square root of that. So the way you get centimeters is however many inches, somebody's like if somebody's 5'9", so there's 69 inches, there's 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So 69 times 2.54 centimeters will tell you how many centimeters tall they are. Their weight in kilograms, whatever the weight in pound is, divided by 2.2. So if somebody was 150 pounds, 150 divided by 2.2 tells you their weight in kilogram. All that divided by 3,600, you get that number, then you take the square root of that number, and that's the person's BSA. Or you may have a table that you look it up on, or it may be given to you. Other components of the, um, the FIC cardiac output, uh, the you need an AO, well, you need an arterial saturation. So. It doesn't matter if it's AO, femoral, radial. Your arterial, your arterial saturation throughout your body should be the same, no matter whether you draw from the AO, from the femoral, from the radial. Now, it's different in your venous saturation. You have varying degrees of venous saturation depending on where you draw your blood. So the only place that you should draw your blood for your mixed venous, or your, people may abbreviate it and call your venous, but it's your mixed venous sat, is from the PA. Now, let me differentiate, it's not a wedge. So when you draw a wedge saturation, that's how you prove sometimes, am I really wedged? Because then your wedge, when your balloon's up, that saturation should be equal to your arterial saturation, okay? So a mixed venous is gonna ra range typically in the 65 to 75, unless it's a sick, sicker patient. Um, it's when the balloon is down and the catheter is in the pulmonary artery. That's the only blood you should use for your venous or your mixed venous uh, oxygen level. All right, so plugging into the formula, we have uh, the O2 consumption. And sometimes it's confusing. You may read in the book, you say the O2 consumption is 125. It's just a given that it's 125 times BSA. Or you can delve into, if somebody's familiar with your somebody's familiar with your computer at work that calculates out your um, BSA for you and your O2 consumption, there's different formulas depending on which, whether you use uh, Expert, whether you use MacLab, depending on what 
computer recording system you use. But continue with FIC. So we have cardiac output is O2 consumption divided by, this is calculated arterial oxygen minus calculated venous oxygen times hemoglobin times 1.36 times 10. So here, 1.36 is the amount of oxygen carried per gram on the hemoglobin. And then you multiply it by 10, it converts grams into deciliters, uh, grams per deciliter into grams per liter. So also, if you're looking at, this is just, not that I'm delving into this, but this is a different formulas for getting O2 consumption, for assuming O2 consumption. But let's look at, let's work out a formula. So let's, so let's work out a calculation. So additionally, the two uh, books that the students use that I use to teach from that I'll recommend, I really recommend Ragosta, uh, the textbook of clinical hemodynamics by uh, Michael Ragosta. This is, a, there's only two editions. This is number two. Uh, the nice thing about it, that when you get it, it comes with a code that you can have an electronic version as well. And then probably everybody in the cath lab, anyway knows the cath lab, the interventional cardiac cath lab handbook by Morton J. Kern. And it also now comes when you buy the book, it comes with a scratch off code. You can have an electronic version of the book, but really the main book for hemodynamics is Ragosta. And I'll leave links in the description below. And as well, I'll write out the formula in the description below so that you can screen grab it, highlight it so that it can be, if you're starting, if you're starting a cheat sheet of formulas, and so I'm going to, th then you can add this to your cheat sheet of formulas. Uh, and I'm going to do a number of videos for like my next one's probably going to be uh, Gorlin aortic valve area and mitral valve area. I'll do one on regurgitant fraction, SVR, PVR, cardiac output, cardi well, I'm doing cardiac output now. Just some of the common formulas that are used and I'll eventually put out my cheat sheet that I use as a reference for school and for work. So looking at a FIC cardiac output. So we have the formula here and here's information that will be given to you in real life or given to you on a test or in your registry. We have an O2 consumption of 125. And again, don't be fooled. It's got to be multiplied by BSA. So we have a hemoglobin. You do have to have you have to know the hemoglobin that changes from patient to patient. And then you have to draw an AO sat or a radial or a femoral. You need an arterial saturation. You need a PA sat. Oh, and also make sure when you do these sets that they, when you plug them in the formula, the 98% is 0.98. The 60 in this one is 69% is 0.69. Okay. So you have to put it in that uh, form. The weight here is given 150 pounds. The height's uh, five foot six inches. And they give us the BSA of 1.82 in this particular example. So we have 125 times 1.8 gives uh, an O2 consumption of 225. Then we have an oxygen saturation of 0.98 minus the venous times 0.69 times 14. Why? That's the hemoglobin of 14 times 1.36 the oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin times 10 to get it into the deciliters per gram. So we have 220 as when you calculate this out, do the 0 0.98 minus 0 0.69, you get a number there times 14 times 1.36 times 10. And that gives you 55.216. So we have 225 divided by that number that gives a FIC cardiac output of 4.07. So uh, pitfalls, if you're doing the calculations, make sure that you use, you know, the decimal for the oxygen saturation. Um, you know, your, your cardiac output is going to be somewhere in the four to eight, uh, liters per minute. And if you do so, oh yeah, the cardiac output is 40. Okay. So it, it's helpful to know normal. Oh yeah. The cardiac outputs, you know, 0.004. Okay. So you know that you've messed up somewhere. You've got something you did multiply by 10 or you multiply by a thousand divided by that. You did something you shouldn't have done. So no normal four to eight. Some books might say four to six. And, um, so when you take the registry, you have to know this formula. So you have to memorize it and it's not particularly, um, hard. It's just something you have to memorize. So, um, I hope this helps if you, uh, like I said, if you're a CVT student or you're taking the registry for your RCS exam, 
this will come in handy. You'll have you'll have to know it. So all right, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up. It would help my channel. And if you found the information useful or helpful, um, consider subscribing. And if you do, turn on notifications for the next video. As I said, I'll be putting out some videos on uh, Gorlin from mitral valve, uh, aortic valve, hacky, or some people say hackai for the shortcut for valve calculation. Just some various cardiovascular um, calculations. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you on the next video.